come and count to ten Because it's something you must know You can practice with your fingers You can practice with your toes It'll help you with your math It'll help you understand Let's practice with your fingers come on. Welcome to Different is Normal I am Suzanne Barnett, your host Tonight, I am very excited to tell you about this show. First of all, we have our, these two very interesting and young men. First, we have Ted Milkey. Ted? How you doing, Suzanne? I'm doing fine, Ted. Ted is not only a guest tonight, but he is the producer of this show, Different as Normal. And Ted told me that one of the students at his school, they go to, both of them go to Stanbridge Academy, and Ted said, I have this friend who is 10 years old, and I would love to have him on the show. And here he is. Hello, Hi. Jasper Nolan. Hi. Hi to you. Guess what? When I first saw you in the green room, mm -hmm. I love your hair. Thanks. Could you tell us about your hair? Well, um, I used to have like really, really long hair and uh, people used to tease me about it. They used to like call me Justin Bieber and stuff, but um, I decided I'm like, I'm not going to get teased anymore. So I'm just like, I'm going to get a mohawk because nobody teases the mohawk. So I got a mohawk and I really liked it. So I still have a mohawk. Is it hard to take care of though to make it stick up? No, not at all. Like what do you do? Oh, you gel it like every once in a while. You don't have to gel it every single day. And some people might think you have to take a shower every single day. You don't. Just every once in a while. So you recommend it? Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Now, how long have you been going to Stanbridge Academy? Well, actually, this is my first year at Stanbridge. Really? Mm-hmm. And how do you like it? It's really, really great. I really like it. It's Why? Fun. Well, for one thing, no, nobody bullies me or anything. And um, I have a lot more friends than I did at my old school. And it's just, I just like think everybody's more friendly and like and, easier to be friends with. And what are you learning? What are you particularly interested in, in the way of studies? Well, I really like art. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm just pretty good at cartooning and stuff. What are you doing in art right now, let me see. Um, well, Good like show. every day we do something different, like uh, for a little bit we were doing this thing about bugs, like we make our own, like we draw half a bug and then like we trace it on the windowsill and then we color it and I did a demon bug. So it's a different kind of art? Yeah. That you're used to, is it? Well, yeah. it's. Although I can kind of somehow turn everything that we do in art into like a cartoon or something. Yeah, well, we're going to show you a big cartoon in a minute. Mm -hmm. But now I want to hear about Mr. Ted Milkey, producer of this show. Tell us about what it's like to be a producer. Well, uh, you have your struggle as a producer. I know I totally thought I would only have three people on crew today, so. Only three? Yep. Ted, tell how many usually you have. Usually I have around three. The shortest I've ever had was two. Um, and I had a fill-in. Um, but they, surprisingly, I sent out emails, sent out two emails. Um, and surprisingly, I got a lot of people here. I wasn't suspecting a lot of people. I was nervous about my show because I didn't know if I was going to have enough people on it. Um, to be crew on it, um, and surprisingly, I did it without Mark Potter's help, which is a big step forward for me. Like he, if I need help, I usually ask him if I need help getting crew. But it's it's a big step forward for me from getting uh, for getting my own crew. Um, I I called Bobby to see if he would mention anyone, and I asked you. I called a couple people around, sent out another email, and um, a lot of people here showed up today. Well, as a producer, I'm a producer too, and it's a big job, Jasper, because mm -hmm. you have to, first you have to get your crew, and a crew is very important. Yeah. You know, we have three cameras, 
we have a director. You tell all the people. Yeah, on t I mean, this is a regular is television regular, studio. Yeah, it might not be one of the high-end ones where they have a set crew, set, like, graphics person, um, like, security people on the show. It's a public access show where everyone here is volunteers. They have one person who does tech every night who's on paid staff. Um, if you don't get enough people to do, like, CG and stuff. Tell what a CG um, is. CG is... Character it's character generator. generator. And um, what is what does a character generator do? It it you put tags up on it. So like for each of us would have our own tag. So I didn't I didn't find anyone for that position. And I know I can just do it in post at home. Um, post you mean you're the one after we do the show, then you're the one that has to edit it and put it together and get it ready to show. Get it ready to show, get it here this station get it up on my website um and having just having all of that I have my dad's really supportive with that I'm gonna be busy tomorrow so I might ask him if he can put name tags in and help edit it um so I don't want to come down here to the station and do it down here because it's it's free if, if I do it at home but down here it's, it's like $28 to rent out for a studio like a uh, edit room suite for like 20 minutes or mm -hmm. half an hour but what do you get out of producing? And how old were you when you started? Because how old are you now? I am 18 now. I didn't know you were 18. My Did birthday was on March 9th. Happy birthday. Why, thank you. 18. There's a big gap between me and Jasper, yeah. eight years. So Jasper, what is it like to be 10? Um, well, it's kind of weird, because sometimes you have friends who are a lot older than you, but Mostly, like yeah, and um, mostly you know, have friends your age, but I don't know, it's just kind of normal. It's kind of like being every un other age, except you're just a lot smaller than everybody else. But does it feel good yeah, to be your it, age? it feels pretty good. Are you a happy guy? Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, I think so too, especially at Stanbridge. Tell us about Stanbridge Academy. Stanbridge Academy is a nonprofit organization um, I don't know how it got started, but it's a school that is for kids with mild to moderate learning disabilities. Um, dyscalculia, uh, autism, um, Asperger's, um, just, uh, ADHD, dyslexia. There's a whole thing there, and um, kids even, there's some kids there that might have a learning disability, but they're it's not diagnosed yet, or it is, or they couldn't go to their regular school because they just, the regular school didn't want to take them because they had something like that, so they came here. Um, all our kids at the school either have a learning disability. Um, we have no physical disability kids there. We have no one in wheelchairs. Um, although we can accommodate them if there is something. If a kid has uh, dyslexia and he is, um, he is in the wheelchair. We can accommodate for him. We do have wheelchair access to the school. Um, all our classrooms are accessible except for two. Those are the two in the basement, so we wouldn't give him any classrooms in the basement. Mm -hmm. We'd give him classrooms in all the other rooms. All the other rooms are accessible, are handicap accessible, but the, the bottom one. And how many kids usually are in a class? Um, average size for high school is seven. Seven or eight. Oh, that's um, fabulous. I believe in elementary and lower, the average is six. Wow. Give or take a couple. And how many in your uh, in your classes, Jasper? Not very good at counting, so I'm going to say like about five. So you're getting all this individual attention. Mm-hmm. Isn't that, doesn't that feel good? Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, like the teacher really cares about you, and the teacher isn't, so harried with you no. know a bunch of kids. No, and she's um, a little bit too easy going. A lot they're too, oh, they're too. Excuse me. She's she's really like she she used to teach kindergarten, so she's she's like really really easy going. Yeah. So what Jasper's talking about is um, one of her teachers there is there used to be um, they used to be in Kari's class, um, but 
you used to be in Scott's class. Scott's class. Um, and Kari, and they mixed together, but they had, now they had too many students in there, um, because they had somebody come in, um, and they had, like, a couple of people come in, so they had to hire another teacher, and, um, that teacher was just available, so that pushed them, because the maximum, um, per grade, I think, is for eight kids, it's about maybe 12 or 13, mm -hmm. like, that's the max where it stops at. Um, so they, it got pushed over the top, so they need another teacher to fill in that. Well, I have interviewed many teachers from Stanbridge Academy. I just really, I'm so impressed. There wasn't one teacher, Jasper, listen to mm -hmm. this, that wasn't really dedicated. They enjoyed teaching so much, really. And so many teachers today, they're just so overwhelmed and overburdened with students. Okay, so just we'll, we'll go back to Stanbridge. Now, I know your very favorite thing is what? Well, it's not my favorite thing, but I really enjoy it. Ask the channel, I'm, I like cartooning. It's, it's kind of like um, when you're dyslexic, People say that like you're you you're it's hard for you to do stuff with numbers and like time and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like when you're drawing stuff and imagining stuff and thinking of stuff, you can you can do stuff that's really good. So like in my class, I'm pretty much like known for my cartooning because everybody's asking me to draw them something. I how do does, a few. How quick does that stick. feel when they ask you? Well, um, it's kind of cool because. Uh, it makes me feel pretty good because people are asking me to do something. I know that I'm that if that it makes me feel like I'm really really good at something that like I can definitely do. Like, and okay. I know I know at um, yeah. at our school is I know in public schools if you start drawing or doing stuff, mm -hmm. um, the teacher might take it away. But at our school you can doodle, you can cartoon, um, you can get up and walk around as much as you want. Um, yeah, the not teachers. Like the teachers there, I mean, some teachers aren't, but if you ask them to go to the restroom, they'll let you go to the restroom, not say you have to wait until the end of class. I see. Um, My but teacher does. It's, it's just with the teacher style, but you can cartoon your class, and they're fine with it. Is if, they, if you're paying attention, you're cartooning. I know in in my math class, I draw on another student because he always falls asleep, and that keeps me occupied during class. <laughs> he falls asleep? He falls asleep So asleep how do you math. deal with that? I just start drawing on him and he wakes up. It, it helps me pay attention to class. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're a real caregiver. You always have been. And I've known you since you were, what, 12? I believe so. Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to hold this really still so the camera can get, get a picture of this. Explain to us, Jasper, what this is. Okay, well, well at first, we, you know, we've got to hold it still because it's very hard. Yes. You know, people oh. just... They, they, you know, show it and then, but meanwhile, the camera can't get it. So let's, I'm going to hold it right here, Jasper, and you tell us about this guy. Well, um, a little while ago in, at my art school, I go to an art school. It's called Fly on the Wall. It's a really good art school. Um, my teacher, uh, he, she asked me. Um, if I could do like, if I could focus on one thing and like focus on like one character and not just draw like tons of different stuff. So I can make a whole book about it cause they're, cause every, at the end of every year they have this art show and in the art show they put stuff in. I always have books of it because I do a lot of artwork. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted me to do a book of at least, it's gonna have at least 20 pages of Bob the Bad Lawyer comics, and that's Bob the Bad Lawyer. This is Bob the Bad Lawyer. So yes. tell, you've got to tell the story. He's, he, this is how bad he is. When, so um, he, when he, he sits on the street with a sign that says, we'll be lawyer for food, and he not only gets his client in jail, he gets himself in jail when he's at court. And yeah, he's just a really, really bad lawyer. I, you know something? I have some friends that are lawyers. I'd love to say something, but I'm not going to say it. So how did you come up with that idea? Well, um, I'd already done a lot of stuff. I've made 
hundreds of things and this was like the one thing I haven't done. I've done like hundreds of stuff. I've done pretty random things, but this is like the only thing I haven't done that I could think of. The lawyers. The, uh, well, I've already done like a pig lawyer and stuff, but. What kind of lawyer? I've, I've done tons of stuff. The only thing I haven't done is a bad lawyer. Oh, a bad lawyer. So you've done good lawyers. No, I haven't done good lawyers because you can't really think of anything funny to do with good lawyers. Really? He knows his politics. <laughs> so all of this comes from your imagination. Yes. Yeah. So when you do cartooning, do you have stories for each character? Well, sometimes I do. I can kind of make them up sometimes, but most of the time I don't. I, if, if somebody asks me to, and I think a little bit, I can make up a story. It's just I'm not very used to it, but yes, I can. But when you draw the picture, like like one of these guys. Uh, well, when I'm drawing a picture, I feel like what he's feeling when I'm drawing him. Oh. I feel like his expression. Is that right? So it's kind of funny when you're watching me draw because I'm making faces while I'm drawing. You know, that's true artistry, I think. Really? Mm. Don't you think oh, so, yeah. Ted? Yes, if I may say, Suzanne does earthquake art, and it's it's magnificent. <laughs> At her house, she has everything, and it brings out her personality. I'm like an earthquake. You're not kidding. No. Don't you, Jasper, we haven't met before. Do you think I'm like an earthquake? I don't know, maybe. Maybe, he says. You know, the good thing about kids, and the bad, it's not bad, is they say, what they really think? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay, so tell about your family. You have a sister. Tell about your sister, Sadie. Well, I have a little sister named Sadie. Um, she's how I'm, old? I'm, uh, she, is, she, is, she is eight. Oh, it's so hard thinking of something good. Um, <laughs> um, she's watching now. Um, <laughs> she's. Uh, she's been, she's a really good sister because, um, oh. well, if she's good, of course she's speechless. You can't think of anything <laughs> nice because she, she's, she's always nice. Um, she is, she's a, she's a friend kind of because, but she's my sister. So, like, she's okay with, um. With, if I have a birthday or something, she is not going to interrupt and like try to make friends with my friends and try to like take me out of the spotlight with wh which is what I do with all her friends and yeah. Do you like the little girls? Uh yeah, they're pretty nice. They're sometimes they say funny things like one time I was wearing this goofy hat. Mm -hmm. This little girl walked up to me and she said, "You look funny." She, I don't, it, I, I'm like, yes, I do look funny. I look like a dog because I have these fake dog ears. Yeah, you know, goofy yeah. from. So that doesn't bother you. No, it's, it's okay. I think it's really, really funny. I think so, too. Because they don't really realize they're saying anything funny. Tell about your mom. I'm going to have your mom on one of my TV shows. Tell, tell what your mom does. Well, my mom's an SEL teacher. SEL stands for social, social emotional learning. She um, works at a school called Nueva. It's a really great school, but they're they're really rich, so it's pretty big. And and uh, my sister also goes to that school. Is that yeah. is that a private school? Um, kind of. I don't really think it is. It's kind of. Okay. Um. The other thing I want to ask you is I understand that you are quite a sidewalk hockeyer. Yeah, what I, is I, that like? I um I don't really play it that much, but when I do, I really like feel happy cuz like um I just like um I just like playing cuz I feel really energetic and like and if you're mad, you can Hit, I hit can, a ball. Yeah, it's I can, street I hockey. Can whack I mean, somebody. You can hit a ball as hard as you it's can. It's not like it's not like you're gonna. It's not like you're gonna. You're gonna get sent out or anything. It's not like you're gonna miss anything because you're you're allowed to like whack them with the ball. Like if you hit the ball and it hits them. Mm -hmm. You can hit the person. Well, not with your N stick. Not with not your stick. With the ball. Yeah, with the but ball. But with the ball, but yeah. doesn't that hurt? 
Yes, it does. It hurts extremely bad. I've been hit in the face before. No way. I've hit in places that you don't want to get hit. I would think so. I don't know if I'd like that sport, Jasper. No, I like it. Well, well that's one of the reasons I like it, because it's so rough, and you can just... It's kind of like, it doesn't have that many rules, like uh, some sports, I really... Well, you should be surprised. It does have fairly a lot of rules, but Nick never brings out the rules. Yeah. Really? You could get rid of all your anger and hostility. Is that good? Would you well, say? Well, I'm not really angry, usually, when I'm playing, but if I was, I'd probably, I'd probably smack the ball as hard as I could at somebody. Yeah. You have. Yes, I have, but I, that wasn't because of anger. That was because I just felt like it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, Mr. Ted, you are going to be, you are a senior now? No, I'm a junior, so okay. I have one more year with this little rascal. Yeah. <laughs> so now, because you're older than Jasper, is it like he's like a little brother? I mean, do you kind of look over him? No, Harrison's his young, Harrison is like his younger brother. Yeah, I I have adopted two younger brothers, as I call it. Yeah, he, he's one of them. Yeah, uh, I'm mini me too. No, you're mini me one. Harrison okay. is oh, mini yeah. me too. Oh yeah. Because he does not look like me. Okay. Um. Well, I met uh, there was this kid Harrison, and he he used to be really scared of me. So I used to say hi to him every day, and it's just he's a, he's a lot younger. He's only nine. Um. And he he was. And then he got just got warmed up to me. Like it's funny, all the lo little kids there, like they all love me. Why do you think? I I, I don't know. That's not a question. Because you're always for me. you're always you're you always are walking through the classrooms and saying hi to everybody. I tend to do that a lot because I tend to. I'm in student council. I tend to do stuff. Um, but you know, you know the first graders love me. You know that. Oh yeah, they all love you. Yes. Who the girls? Is that oh, what you yes. said? Yes, the girls. Are the girls hot on him? Well, the, <laughs> the little girls are just like running up and just like, hi, Ted. Yes. Oh, Ted. I don't, I don't get to spend much time with them as I want to because I'm in high school and they're in elementary and oh, lower elementary. They like older men. Apparently so. <laughs> Jasper, what do you think about that? Well, I just, I don't know. I'm I'm usually playing Foursquare or something while they're saying hi to Ted. Okay. I play Foursquare with you sometimes. Foursquare. Is that fun? It, it, it's a lot of fun because... Mm -hmm. It's another sport where you can whack the ball and not get yelled yeah, at. I, it, Especially the whole point when you're playing against younger kids like them and you can whack. You actually whack want it. to hurt. You actually want to hit them with the ball because if you get hit with the ball, you're out. Oh, 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 oh. No, we don't play These by the lower school of... rule. High schools, when we play four square, it's an all out, like, brawl. Like, you literally see the ball coming right at you. Yeah, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to do that. We're, you guys counts. do underhand. We do overhand. And we don't even let it bounce. We just smack it when it's in the air. These are kind of violent games. That's what I used to do at my old school. That's what we used to do at my old school. People were like, I'd, I stopped playing it for a little while because I, I'm, I was afraid of getting injured. But then I played it and I injured a few people and I thought it was pretty fun. There's one sport that I'll never let anyone at Stanbridge play. Um, cool. I helped invent it at my old school. It's called Dodge the Dodgeball. It's where people line up on a wall, mm -hmm. you take a dodgeball, <laughs> and you throw it at them. No. And they have to dodge it. If you get hit, you're out. Then the last person who survives is the person who throws it next. Now, I'm, I have oh, a different yeah. attitude. What were you going to say, Jasper? Oh, my God, that sounds really fun and violent, <laughs> and I probably wouldn't want to play it. I'd probably be the one who wants to throw it at people. Well, you're going to have to stand in there, too. And if there's no dodgeball around, you play it with a tennis ball. That hurts even more. What about a basketball? No, that's too heavy. Yeah, you can't probably can't throw it as quickly, can you? Well, the heavier it is, the the more the faster it's gonna go. Well, not when you're playing with high school students. I, I invented that in my old school, and man, now the PE teachers love it because they can stand there with the soft dodgeball, stand there and make all their kids line up and throw it at them. And the PE teachers love it because it's. It's something where they're not going to get in trouble and the students aren't going to get hurt. You play with a nice soft dodgeball. I see. But when we played out on the playground, we played with one of those real hard, real dodgeballs. That, the one, that ones that bounce. Do, do you think that the boys like these games better than the girls? Uh, I believe so. Do you think so? Really? Yeah, because girls, aren't, girls, girls yeah. aren't violent. Girls aren't violent. A lot are... of girls at our school um, either have a crush on another boy Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have anyone likes you. Yes, yeah, it's it's super annoying. 
Um, and <laughs> and they're really shy, and they usually mm-hmm. stand and cluster together. Mm-hmm. Now, it's a whole different story in high school. In law school, they sort of, like, hang out. In high school, there's a female. They sit there. You can go up to them. And then there's they're totally, like, there's, like, females that play dodgeball with us. And they're full-grown high school men throwing dodgeballs pretty fast, including teachers, at each other. And they're standing right in there with us playing. So what do you think about that? Hey, if they get hit, it's their fault because they're playing. <laughs> it's their fault. I'm going to ask you a personal question. Mm-hmm. Do you have any girlfriends? No. Or any girls that like you at the school? Well, no, no. no. I, um, my old school, there is a girl named Mira. Yeah, what is she like? Um, well, she's kind of shy. She blushes a lot. Um, my old teacher, he's really mean, well, and he's he's kind of strict. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, he's, he's not strict. He's just kind of mean. He teases her a lot. He called. Oh, teacher shouldn't do that. No. Yeah, no. Uh, he he has a reputation. One year, he he um dumped a kid in the trash can head first. It was. Kind of, That's shocking. Yeah. Don't you think? He's he's really tall and he's yeah. That's like being a bully. You don't have bullies at your school. No. I there, hope. There, there might be some kids that bully each other he playfully. Did. Oh. He please. defended himself. He said, he said the, but the trash can was empty. It doesn't make a difference. We don't, we know that. So we're just about through with this show. I want to know, number one, have you had a good time? Yes. It's been pretty fun. And I want to thank you so much, Jasper. I think you have been a wonderful guest. You know, your mom's telling you something, I'm telling you something, and Ted's telling you something, and you came through all of it. Not including your sister. Did the sister say something too? Yeah, she said, talk about me. Oh boy, that is what I call hot. You know, everybody says cool. Oh, that's cool. I never say that. I say it's hot. Or I say, I say that's awesome. Yeah. No one uses that anymore. They don't? Okay. No, I do. I want to thank you so much, Ted, the producer. I want to thank Jasper, the cartoonist, and quite a good television guest. I'm very, very proud. Thanks. I really have enjoyed talking to both of you. And my goodness, with a crew this small, I just know they've done a wonderful job and I thank them with all my heart. And number one, two, that's really third, is I want to thank our audience for watching. What would we do without our audience? And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come and count to 10 because it's something you must know. You can practice with your fingers, you can practice with your toes. toes. It'll help you with your math, it'll help you understand. Let's practice with your fingers, come on now let's begin. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, It again. Come and count to ten because it's something you must know. You can practice with your fingers.